Hey, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about HP ProLiant DL320E Gen 8 V2 Server Memory Upgrade Kits and how to properly load and configure the system. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HP ProLiant DL 320e Gen 8 V2 server. If you find anything useful in this video, do us a favor and click that like and smash that subscribe. Well, hey, let's get started. Uh, first things first, we'll go over the CPUs. There is uh, one CPU. Uh, it's an LGA 1155 socket. Uh, it takes a couple different CPUs. In particular, uh, it takes the Intel Xeon E3 1200 V1 or V2 series CPUs. What we recommend for this in particular is the E3 1240 V2 or the E3 1270 V2. Those seem to be the most popular with, uh, with our customers and what we generally build our systems with. Uh, you can also use a couple of Intel Pentium processors or some Intel uh, Core i3 processors. Um, so those are the, the uh, variety of different processors you can use. But like I said, I, I personally go with the, uh, the Intel Xeon E3 1200 series, uh, spe specifically the V2s. Uh, now that we know a little bit about the CPUs, let's talk about the RAM. Uh, as far as the RAM is concerned, uh, it takes DDR3 memory. Uh, there are four DIMM slots inside. Uh, there's a number of different speeds you can use. You can use uh, 1066, 1333, uh, 1600, and technically you can use 1866, but I will tell you in advance, it'll clock back down to 1600. So the real max speed uh, for this mis uh, machine is 1600. Um, then there's a couple different sizes you can use. You can go as low as a 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, or all the way up to an 8 gig. No, unfortunately, there are no 16 gigs for this machine. 8 gig is the highest uh, capacity per DIMM. Uh, there's uh, only one type of RAM that you can use for this machine, which is ECC unbuffered, which is also known as a server UDIM. With uh, ECC unbuffered, the max that you can get in this machine is 4 by 8 gigs for 32 gigabytes at 1600 megahertz. Uh, so now that we know a little bit more about it, Let's go ahead and pop it open. Uh, I want to show you uh, the inside, how to physically install them, learn a little bit more about the channels. Um, and one other thing that I would note, a lot of times people ask me what would be a, a comparable um, system for Dell. Um, if you're, uh, if you know anything about the Dell R2102, uh, we'll actually put up a link right here that you can um, can check it out. But the Dell R2102 uh, is basically, uh, I don't want to say 100% compatible, but pretty much CPUs, RAM, uh, the 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 low-end applications that's used for it, it's a very similar system. Uh, but this is actually a little bit cheaper, so uh, we recommend this uh, quite a bit to our customers. So anyhow, I'm going to grab my ESD because you never want to grab uh, be inside a machine without your ESD gear, and then we're going to go ahead and pop it open and we'll learn a little bit more. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. First things first, make sure the latch is set to unlock. Simply pop it open and lift the top up. Pretty simple, like... Uh, Pretty much any uh, server you've been inside before. Uh, one thing I did want to note that uh, you know this this video is more about uh, the CPUs and RAM, and in particular the RAM. But um, I did want to note this uh, specific chassis is a two bay large form factor. Uh, there's trays in the front, and it is hot swap. Uh, so if you uh, want to know a little bit about the drives, you can put uh, two drives in this machine. Uh, and again, it's perfect for low end applications. That's that's pretty much what people use this for. Uh, it's just some some of the uh, the simple stuff out there. I wouldn't recommend it for a complex virtualization environment, for instance. But anyhow, um, to get to the RAM and the CPUs, uh, very simple. Just after you open the top, you'll notice the air baffle right here. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but the air baffle does label the channels. Uh, so that is helpful if you um, aren't 100% sure. Um, so we'll lift the air baffle up, just go straight up. Uh, here are uh, the memory modules as we discussed for DIMM slots. Um, you can see that they're color coded, uh, which means that there are uh, two memory channels and each memory channel has two DIMMs uh, per slot. Uh, and the memory channels start with the white slot. So for instance, if you were only gonna put in two modules, you'd wanna put them in the two white slots, okay? Um, and then of course here is your uh, CPU that controls all the slots. So we're gonna go ahead and physically uh, install the upgrades for you right now. Uh, we are loading in for eight gigs and maxing this out at 32 uh, gigabytes. But before we get going, I wanted to, to note uh, you will see that there is this notch right here in the middle, which is known as the key. This key is important because it's not perfectly in the center, so you need to make sure that you align your module properly. There's a notch inside 
side of the um, the slots here and if uh, if you don't line it up perfectly uh, then the key will be off center with the the notch and you can actually potentially damage the lead on the module or you could damage the slot which would mean you'd have to get a new motherboard which nobody wants so it's a very simple thing but it's a very common user error so we always like to point it out before we get going so another thing that I always like to do too I, I like to pop open all my tabs uh, just make it a little bit easier so when I actually start to physically install the modules that I'm not fumbling around or, or, or wasting any time doing that so um, we're gonna line it up properly which will be this way and then we're gonna slide it in to the slot and you will notice I, I am not uh, touching the module it's in there it looks like it's fully seated uh, but it, it really isn't fully seated and this is another common user error and we always tell people this is really important that you need to make sure that your modules are fully seated so you want to hear these two clicks right so you're gonna push it down Just click one and there's click two so the tabs what ends up happening and you can see how the tabs are, are further back on these three than this one the tabs end up clicking into the side and actually physically pulling the module down a little bit which actually puts the seeds uh, the leads into the uh, slot and that's how everything is registered so you know it's again a, a simple user error um, that we always tell people just to be extra safe with um, because it is what we see uh, one of the most common common issues out there so again you want to hear click click just that simple and we'll do it again. So again, if you were only putting in two, you would just put them in the two white slots. Since I'm maxing them out, you know, I'm putting it in all of them, of course. But I did want to just kind of stress that point. Uh, and people ask us why, and really it's all about uh, maximizing your performance. Uh, you don't want to overload one channel and then have another channel not working for you. Uh, so you just want to have a nice, uh, even distribution of your load across uh, both channels. So anyhow, look at it, just that easy. Uh, it really, it, it only takes... I mean, really, 30 seconds to a minute to do this, um, and so, and we tell this to, to people if this is like, let's say, your office server that you're using, um, and it's not in a data center, and, and you wanted to know if you can, you know, upgrade this yourself. Yeah, it's it's really easy to do. You don't have to be a true technician. Obviously, it helps to be a technician because you understand the inner workings. But as far as just popping the modules in, it's it's very very easy. Uh, then you're just simply going to put the air baffle back on top, and you want to line it up properly with the fans. It just goes perfectly over it and just like that it only took a couple of minutes and we were able to put the maximum amount of RAM in here so I um, want to say thanks for stopping by if you guys need any upgrades for your HP ProLiant uh, DL320E Gen 8 V2 uh, do us a favor and uh, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com we got a ton of modules specific for this machine uh, we'd love to help you out and hey if you made it this far click that like and smash that subscribe thanks for stopping by and have a great day